Howdy friendos, Crazy Jason here, and you have entered my Wacky Emporium, baby. Now, I'm uh, experimenting with a new format here. Well, it's not really new. It's based on the ye old venerable DVD Blu-ray update. Um, but it's something that I'm thinking about doing on a weekly basis, uploading every Friday. And I'm going to be taking DVDs and Blu-rays that I've scored on our field trips over at Kakalaki Movies and a lot of DVDs and Blu-rays that I've scored on my solo treks out because I go bargain hunting once or twice a week outside of the video and I end up getting a lot of stuff and I'd love to be able to share it with you guys. Um, one of the main reasons why I started this channel, well I have several main reasons, I have a lot of plans for videos um, that I've already made and plans for videos that I'm going to make, but one of the main reasons in connection to Kakalaki movies is that, you know, we go on our bargain hunting trips and at the end we have the haul and yes, we show the DVDs, but we don't have the time in that format um, to go into detail about the movies themselves. Well, I'll bring the movies home and I watch them and I'm eager to share you know, further thoughts that I have about the movies. So that's basically why I'm doing this. So you guys let me know what you think. If this is something that you would like to see on a weekly basis, um, like every Friday, my idea was uh, upload it on Friday, and that way I can share a lot of uh, good films with you guys and maybe give you some ideas of something you might want to rent or purchase that weekend. Um, now, I have filmed this four times already and every single time I go too long. The first two times were over 30 minutes long. Now I can upload videos uh, of that length um, but I don't know if you guys want to sit through and hear all my rambling thoughts. Now I do throw out a lot of interesting tidbits and stuff but um, you know let me know. I mean I would only do it once a week but if you guys are willing to sit through 25 to 30 minutes of my thoughts on my haul, you know, let me know. Otherwise, your silence will speak volumes. So, let's get right down to it, or I'm going to run into the same problem again. First up, Near Dark. Now, this was a gift from a very generous uh, viewer, Robert, I believe his name is. Uh, we just did the unboxing. The video went up last night, and... Um, you, uh, I highly recommend going to watch it. He sent us a big box of goodies, but don't leave yet. Finish my video here, please. Um, this is one of those movies from the 80s that I thought I had seen, but I missed. How could I miss this movie? It's Catherine Bigelow. I'm a big Catherine Bigelow fan. Um, and this is a, a down and dirty vampire flick about a close knit group of uh, vampires. They don't really go into the mythology. A whole lot, um, you know, they just are amoral, the creatures who travel um, the southwest of the United States. Um, a lot of great acting, Lance Henriksen as the uh, head vampire, of course Bill Paxton steals a lot of scenes with his um, insanity. Um, this is what the inside looks like. Really nice packaging from Anchor Bay, the back, and there's quotes from all of the characters in there. Really nice. I, I've heard the blue. I've heard mixed things about the Blu-ray. I'm not. Um, I'm really happy with this edition. Um, if I can find the Blu-ray for a decent price, I'll get it. But otherwise, you know, for its time, this was packed with all the best technology. It had color. It has color bars on it. It's got a THX optimizer, which I always love, and um, I have yet to explore the special features, but I've heard that the uh, special features this, on the second disc are really great. So, next up, Overnight, which I scored at Mr. Unnameables. Uh, this is the documentary about the infamous asshole Troy Duffy, who directed the Boondock Saints, and Boondock Saints 2 All Saints Day. Uh, this is basically the story of a man who blows it. 
Um, Harvey Weinstein bought his script out of the blue, made him an overnight sensation. Uh, Hollywood's instant golden boy. Stars were coming to hang out with him. Um, but then he couldn't get a hold on his raging ego. And uh, he thought he knew better than everybody else. And basically, he burned all of his bridges, ostracized everybody, treated his friends and family like complete shit. And worst of all, he uh, pissed off the Weinsteins. And so they no longer had an interest in making his film. So he had a hell of a time getting his film made. And uh, he poisoned the well. No one would touch it. Um, he finally found this little independent distributor. Of course, it became a cult hit on a DVD, but um, you know he didn't he didn't make any money <laughs> off of that. Um, so yeah, it's it's a real. It, I mean, if you're a fan of documentaries, uh, if you're a fan of seeing you know behind the scenes of uh, movie making and stuff like that, and the quick rise and fall of people who just don't know when they have a good thing. I don't know. You have to see. I, I, I highly recommend this documentary. Pet Cemetery, which I dug out of the $5 bin at Walmart. I didn't have it on DVD. Nice eco packaging there. Um, one of the things that pushed me over the edge is it has a commentary by Mary Lambert, the director. Haven't gotten to listen to it yet, uh, but um, I have a special place in my heart for this film because it's the first film that genuinely scared me as a kid. And may have something to do with the fact that a little kid takes a razor blade and slices Herman Munster's Achilles tendon. That, that, that might have had something to do with the fact of why I was so fucking terrified. But, um... Yeah, the film really doesn't hold up uh, over time. The, the acting is terrible. Production design is kind of shoddy. But um, it's good cheese, and I'll definitely revisit it. You know, I'll probably watch it around October. As a quick side note, Stephen King's novel Pet Cemetery is a great read. If you're a Stephen King uh, enthusiast, I would definitely read it. If you haven't, it, it's a lean read. He had shelved it for a number of years because even he thought it was uh, too much. Moving on quickly as I can. These next two are films that I have been searching for. If you've been following us over at Kaklaki Movies, you know that I've been on the hunt for these movies. Now, I'm going to predicate this by going ahead and saying, you know, people have asked again and again, Hey, crazy! Why don't you just get on Amazon and order it used and get it in a few days and be done with it? Because it's not the same. I've got this primordial instinct, like a Neanderthal man, like a hunter-gatherer, to go out there and take my prey by my hands and kill it and mount it on my wall. And that's what I did with these titles right here. And there's no greater thrill than to go out there into the world and, you know, track down what you want. First up, Save the Tiger. You guys probably remember recently I've been on the hunt for this like fucking Captain Ahab. Well, I finally reeled in my whale at Books A Million of all places. Not really known for their uh, DVD selection. And I would caution you not to <laughs> go looking there because this was $7 when... It was $3 at Big Lots, so not really a great deal, but um, I've been on a Jack Lemmon kick lately. Jack Lemmon won the Academy Award for this film, and he definitely deserved it. He uh, basically plays a uh, middle-aged man who um, his company is going under, and he'll go to any unscrupulous lengths to uh, save the company. So, um, and it was directed by John G. Alvidson, and if that name doesn't ring a bell, um, he's the man who went on to direct Rocky, which is one of my favorite films of all time. But uh, Save the Tiger, definitely worth checking out. And then Rushmore, which I have been on the hunt for since before the inception of Kakalaki Movies. And um, I have the regular edition DVD of this, but 
I've been warning the Criterion for a long time because this is in my top 20 uh, favorite movies of all time. I think it's an almost perfect film, one of those rare, nearly perfect movies. Um, really great addition. Um, this was back when they didn't release the nice thick booklets that they do now, but they do have um, this little booklet. And what's really cool is that they have this map of Rushmore and all of the characters in the film as drawn, presumably, by Max. So, that's really cool. I like having all these little extras on the movies that I love. Now, I do realize that this is... Since they did release Bottle Rocket on Blu-ray last year, um, this is probably coming to Blu-ray very soon, and that's fine. I'll, I'll keep this edition as well. I'm not one of those that upgrades and gets rid of my DVD, but I won't go into that right now because I'll just end up going long again. But that that's a prime example. If you guys want me to ramble on about why I don't do the upgrade thing and I keep my DVDs and my Blu-rays both, then uh, let me know and I'll be happy to go long for you. Well, that ends the DVD update. Uh, portion and now I'm going to get into the Blu-rays. First up, Let Me In. This is uh, the US version um, and I picked it up at Walmart. It was an impulse buy. That's rare. I broke code and went ahead and just paid full retail for it because I just wanted to see it. Couldn't find it at Redbox and I just had to have the instant gratification. Is it better than the Swedish version? It's too early to tell. I made the mistake of watching it um, in the morning. Um, and I have a plasma screen. And even with the latest technology, there's still glare problems. And this is a very dark film. Um, in fact, I went on IMDb before shooting this update. And I saw on their technical specs that they used very fast lenses to shoot this. Um, uh, and the reason why is because it's so dark. The shadows are long. Um, the faces are oftentimes in almost complete darkness. But uh, it comes with a comic book that was packaged very poorly. They just stuck it into the back of the sleeve. Um, I, you know, I, Blu-ray packaging, that's another thing. I could go long on a Blu-ray rant. I, uh, in one of the earlier incarnations, I compared it to uh, my beloved Escape from New York Special Edition, which has a comic book inside, and I explained how this is a great way to package a comic book, and this is a terrible way to do it, but, um, you know, again, don't want to go too long, so I'll save that for another occasion. Moving on, Enemy at the Gates, and uh, this is a criminally underrated war film. Uh, one of the best films uh, set during World War II. I love films set during World War II. Um, I, great, I have two complaints. One is um, Ed Harris's uh, American accent. <laughs> I don't. I still have yet to. Uh, I think I read something that he didn't have enough prep time. But your excuses are your own, pal. He should have learned that from Glengarry Glen Ross. But um, the other thing is uh, James Horner, God bless James Horner, you know, he's a, he's, he's a great composer, but he's got this recurring theme in every movie he does, you know, Battle Beyond the Star, Star Trek, even on up to Avatar, it's that, da na 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 da na 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 it gets on my fucking nerves, it's in every single film he does. But um, anyway, all, uh, performances are great. I, I would uh, rate this a solid 4.5 out of 5 stars. Transfer is good. Um, they could have done a better cleanup job on the uh, source material, but uh, the blacks are inky, and it's beautiful looking. Highly recommended. Leaving Las Vegas. My God, I could spend 10 minutes talking about this. This was the Best Buy exclusive that I picked up. Um, the transfer was faithful to the source. It was shot on 16, super 16 millimeter. And, um, 
again on the uh, lengthier version I went into a little bit about uh, my phone is going off that is very irritating but um anyway um, God bill collectors they start early don't they uh, anyway um, maybe I should stop buying blu-rays and pay my bills what do you guys think So, uh, leaving Las Vegas, uh, Nicolas Cage plays a drunk who gets fired from his job and goes out to Las Vegas to drink himself to death, but he meets Elizabeth Shue, who plays a prostitute. They fall in love. Complications ensue. Um, I'd love to go on and talk about uh, Super 16mm and the transfer and Blu-ray, but um, I'll have to save that for another time. Unless the consensus is that you guys will let me make 30-minute updates. Because this is give and take. Like I said, you know? Mi casa su casa. You know? We're, we're, we're a team. You and me. Last score. All About Eve. The Digibook. <laughs> Digibook. Um... This is a beautiful edition, and it's a limited edition, and I do believe that probably after this initial run, they'll uh, reissue it in the standard crappy eco case, and we don't want that. Um, now, this is interesting because it doesn't have a hub. It does not have a plastic hub. It just seats in this, uh, and I was worried about that, but I got it, and as you can see, it just pops right out doesn't scrape against uh, the cardboard or anything. So that's a very simple but ingenious design. Other studios should take note. No plastic here, you know? So um, if you really want to be eco-conscious, why don't you go with more uh, Blu-ray books? I love Blu-ray books. Um, to me, I, I love them just as much as steel books. And right now I'm on a real Blu-ray book kick. I'm just lusting after them. There's so many that I want. But um, All About Eve is one of my favorite older films. Um, one of the best written screenplays of all time. A um, lot of great features on here. Uh, if you haven't seen it, I highly recommend it. The Blu-ray, of course, looks fantastic. I do have to warn you that it is pillar boxed. Black bars on either side because it was shot in the uh, Academy ratio. So, um, that's it for my inaugural official Blu-ray DVD update, or Crazy's Weekly Roundup is uh, what I'm going to call it, I think. Uh, but anyway, uh, again, let me know what you think, and if you want me to do this on a weekly basis, uploading it every Friday, and let me know if you want me to go long. And I mean, I know even this was long, but if you want me to go longer and be able to talk about all of the things that I wanted to talk about but don't have time, um, let me know. Thanks for watching. I'm Crazy Jason, and you've been in my Wacky Emporium.